The year was 1944 in Nazi-occupied France. Adolf Hitler had just issued a startling order, destroy the Eiffel Tower. It would be the last indignity on the French during the German retreat. Fortunately, Hitler's men did not follow his order. Perhaps their decision was influenced by how sturdy the tower is. It was built to last. Built in 1889, the Eiffel Tower remains one of France's tallest structures. It is over 320 meters, or about the length of three football fields. As you travel from ground level to the very top, you will see a number of triangular supports. Gustav Eiffel, the designer of the tower, was originally a bridge builder before he became the creator of the tower that bears his name. Many of the bridges that Eiffel built relied on a structural support called a truss. A truss is a triangular shaped support that allows a bridge to support heavy weight. Here's how a truss works. Imagine two parallel planes that represent the two horizontal supports of a bridge. The top plane is the platform where a person or vehicle will stand and the lower plane helps support the weight of the person. The two planes are connected by a triangular truss. The point where the triangle meets the upper plane is called the vertex of the triangle. Suppose that someone is walking across the bridge and sets foot above the vertex. There is a downward force indicated by the arrow. This force is then redirected into two smaller forces because of the truss. The two sides of the triangle each have a downward slanting force, and as a result, the vertical force is split and redirected. This is one way that a truss makes it possible for a bridge to carry a lot of weight by redistributing it. Let's take a closer look at this phenomenon. Civil engineers refer to the downward forces on the two sides of the triangle as forces of compression. This is because the weight, also referred to as the load, presses down on these parts of the truss. The base of the triangle experiences a different type of force. The two upper sides of the triangle are pointed in two different, opposite directions. This creates two outwardly pointing forces. So, the base of the triangle experiences what engineers refer to as tension. The base is pulled in two directions. With all these forces at work, why doesn't the truss fall apart? With a well-designed bridge, all of the forces are balanced in what is called static equilibrium. But this equilibrium is based on the stability brought about by a triangle, 